Fulcher, welcome along. Welcome, 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 everybody. Come in, there's loads of room. Gather together for live Irish myths. I'm Anthony Murphy of Mythical Ireland. Welcome along to episode number 43. Iver, a dachid is a three. 43, can you believe it? You're all very welcome this evening. I will give you all an individual welcome if possible. <clears throat> Hope you're all keeping safe, healthy and well and that you're not too anxious or depressed or isolated in the current lockdown situation, which most of us find ourselves in. There are lots of glimmers of hope. There are vaccine trials taking place with humans in England and the first volunteers got their trial vaccine this evening. Uh, the government here is indicating that there may be some relaxation of the restrictions um, before May the 5th or announced before May the 5th. So hopefully, you know, hopefully, let's let's be positive. Hope springs eternal. And I always love to quote from the Shawshank Redemption, Andy Dufresne, hope is a good thing, maybe the best of things, and no good thing ever dies. So gather around, grab yourself a pew or a chair or a stool or a some something to sit on or a log gather around let's imagine that we're uh, situated around a roaring hearth an open fire that there's a giant pot of tea on the brew or you know a bit of pochin <laughs> or a bottle of whiskey there uh, to be passed around that everybody can get a dram anyway look it's good to see you all it really really is it's fantastic to see you all this has this whole thing has made me so uh, so upbeat about everything. Uh, it has helped enormously, uh, and thanks to the tribe, the Tua Tua de Mythflix, as we have called ourselves, and you guys who make it wonderful, uh, and your commentary and your interaction and your love and warmth and kindness towards each other is truly uplifting it really is it's fantastic it had re it has really really given me a life's purpose and not that i didn't have life purpose before and i shouldn't be scratching my nose with my hand but uh yeah it's been great fun Alan De Silva says, Call me on episode in a och tome on show in you. Giagrich Anthony, Gios Murugrich Alan, and I'm glad that you're able to be here live. Daisy Peter says, Without doubt, this is my appointment every afternoon slash evening, and I love watching these wonderful episodes of Mythical Ireland. And Daisy is in Brazil. Nice for you, of you to join us. Judith Nylon, my good friend, the author is uh, not far from Seattle in Washington State, is watching on YouTube as well. The Stutterer, whose real name is Daniel Kedney, says hello on YouTube. Brilliant stuff. Fáil Gerot, Daniel. Banachti Gach he says. Brilliant stuff. Uh, Multineal11 says, Hi, Anthony. It's Mellow Nello here. Can't find you on FB this evening. So lucky I can catch you on, on the tube. That's on. That's really strange. I actually, um, I've got Facebook open on the other uh, page here on the other monitor and it says mythical ireland is live now live irish myths episode 43 of course the typical thing with facebook is is despite the fact there are fifty four thousand followers of youtube very few of them get notifications of every post for some reason but that's facebook paul in the hill of tara says well what's happening all good hope your ankle is healing up well paul and uh, i wonder what the what the dram is this evening Pat Rowan is watching, first of the commenters on Facebook tonight, my good friend Pat Rowan. I want to tell you a story about Pat in a moment. Uh, I hope, it, Pat, hope you won't be embarrassed by it, Pat. Michael Naylor says, greetings, Anthony and Tribe. Mike and Jeanette in New Jersey. Hello to the New Jerseyans in my lovely... Uh, I, 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 I visited the States for the first time last year, and I was based in Princeton, and it is an extraordinarily beautiful place. Mariana Dunn, greetings to the Mythflix Tua. Giagrich, Mariana, Kirsten Salisbury, hello from the little studio in British Columbia. Sounds lovely, Kirsten. Very, you're very welcome along. Pat Rowan says, me chair. <laughs> Maeve, Fina Callahan, good mythical evening, Anthony, and all the two. Trunonawa, Maeve. Yvette Tillema says, hello, sunny, keen New York. The snow is melting. Brilliant stuff. We had a lovely, lovely, warm, sunny day here today. Steve Martinson, hello, Anthony. Hope you and your dear family are always safe, loved, and well. Cheers. We absolutely are, Steve, and that's very nice of you to ask. And I ask the same right back to you. Alan Briette, Giagrich, Anthony, Gius Murugich, Alan. 
great to have another episode of Mythflix tuning in again from Rhode Island, Fall Chimotua. Mariana Dunn, you've been fantastic, Anthony. Agree totally how much has been shared. Yeah, it's lovely. It really is. Welcome along, Mariana. Aaron Pixie Kusik says, hello, Tua and Anthony. Good to be here. Gia Gutsch. Gia is Murugutsch, Aaron. Pat Rowan says, uplifting. Yes, indeed. I hope so. Adam McCormick says, hello, sir. Hello, Adam. Fall John McGovern is watching. I Tronona a Chion Conas Tatu, Adina Sparks. Hello, everyone. Hope everyone is healthy and safe today. Well, so far so good, Adina. Nice to have you along. Josephine Meehan says greetings from Dunmangal. Uh, you're very welcome, Josephine. Guido Bruce is watching. Falcia Guido. Andrea Lagoya says ciao from Italy. Thanks for your daily company. Very glad to have you in the house. And ciao, Andrea, and all our friends in Italy. Joan Rankin says hello from Cape Breton Island. Joan, it's always a pleasure to have you along. Rowan Grove. Hello all from a cloudy grey day, Colorado. My front yard is full of dandelions and the bees are enjoying them. Yep, one of the upsides of the current situation is that very few green areas and grass verges are being trimmed, which means the wildflowers are blooming all over the place and the bees and the butterflies are happy. What's the, what are bees in Irish? I know butterflies are phalacon. Doris O'Hara, good evening, Anthony and all. Beck, isn't it? Beck Breha. Mmm, yes. He cheats here for a moment. English to Irish on Google. B. Biach. Hmm. Biacha. Bees. There you go. The, the Biacha, na Biacha, agus na Felachain are enjoying na Blahana. Good evening, Anthony and all. Doris, uh, Gia Doris Ralph Waldron says hi from Aft League. Looking forward to episode two. Very nice to have you in the house, Ralph. Pull up a, a, st a stool or a chair and make yourself comfortable. Barbara Kling says, hello, everyone. Greetings again from Vermont. And hello to all our Vermontian fans. Hello, Barbara. Laura Adome Troy says, hello, Anthony. A chilly and magic evening in Blessington. Waiting for your story. Falcha, Laura. Leanne Brenner-Williams. Good afternoon, Anthony. Uh, Tranonawa, Leanne. Uh, Katrina says, dandelion tea. Fantastic. Excellent. like it. Janet Deese says, hello. Falcha, Janet. Shannon Winnaker. Hello, Anthony. Happy to join you from home in Baltimore. Hope you and all your loved ones are keeping safe and well, Shannon. Always lovely to see you. And Rowan Grove says B equals Bech. Well, I guess that's the earlier Irish, is it? Bech. Like uh, this, the spelling of singular B in modern Irish is apparently Bech, B E A C H. But uh, Bech, yes. Bech. Lovely. Fernando Rivera is in Florida in the USA. Falcha. Nabiacha equals bees. Thank you, Katrina. Nick Eska Casterton, one of our very, very regular regulars, says, Hi, Anthony. Good evening to a Tranonawa. Mandy McCurl. Hello, all from the Isle of Mull. Mandy, always a pleasure uh, to have you along. Rowan Grove. My email ad addy is Bechbreha. There you go. Mary McLean says, good afternoon, Anthony from Austin in Texas. Hello, Mary. And I think you joined the Mythical Ireland community today. You're very, very welcome. Just to those of you who are on the Mythical Ireland page, uh, the, the Mythical Ireland community is a separate uh, Facebook page where you can actually post stuff as well. Ma Mahu. Katrina, it is my great delight to tell you that I'm on a nine-day-in-a-row streak on Duolingo, uh, currently relearning my Irish. So there you go. I hope, ho ho hope that's... Um, Mm, hope that puts me in the good books. Federica Guy is another of our v regular viewers from Italy. Hi, Anthony. Hi, Tua. Lots of love from Italy and lots of gra from Ireland. Right back to all our Italian friends. Alex Casterton. Evening, Anthony. Blew the horns tonight for our health services. We have the cow battle horns. Brilliant stuff, Alex. Uh, brilliant. Delighted to hear that. Karen Gogus is watching. Brilliant stuff. Fasker Ma. Brilliant. Uh, I swear I'm not Googling what Fasker is. F-E-S-G-A-R. Ah, Fasker. Another way of saying evening. Mm, there you go. Didn't, you didn't know that one. Evening, everyone. Margaret Ring is in the house. Margaret, thank you for all your help on that other matter. We'll be re revealing that uh, soon enough. Jim Conway is in Lurgan in Armagh. Ardvacha, mythical. Hup, Duolingo Abu, Rail to Or, Gold Star. And on YouTube... Maybe it's my phone, says Neil. Yeah, I was so worried you might have actually taken an, an event off after only 42 nights straight on the trot. No, 
No, I'm going to keep going, Neil. I'm going to keep going because it's important to everybody. It's important to me too. Yeah. I'll like, uh, getting on. Okay. Be back over. Oh, ankle. Be back over Doha in about three weeks for a checkup. Good stuff, Paul. Well, keep safe and keep well. Jackie Stevenson says, hello, Anthony. Looking forward to this episode from California. Fall to Jackie. Irish technical thinker, Marcus and Rachel are watching from Belfast. Gia, Gia Glitch, Gia Smur uh, Gia Reeve. Uh, Gomani Giyagiv Anto, good evening from Monaster Boyce It's the Woodsies are watching Another day done in the work zone Looking forward to the, the distraction Not liking working in the HSE Garda stations and army barracks Well, all I can say is Thank you for your work uh, And for putting yourself in harm's way To make sure that all the rest of us are safe uh, Our best wishes to you uh, In your work And thank you for tuning in and on Facebook, we have Helen Guinan in the house. Everybody, please stand on one knee, genuflect. Her Majesty, Her Royal Highness is in the house. Erin uh, Durrett is watching one of our regulars. Hi, Erin. Falche. Elaine Duff Kopetsky, hello from British Columbia. You and your family stay safe and well. And you also, Elaine. Louise Sherrill says hi. Falche, Louise. Howdy, beloved to us, says Aaron. Top of the morning slash afternoon slash evening to you. Brilliant. Annie Newton says, hi, Anthony. Still in mandatory lockdown here in Peru. Now just extended through May. So your show makes my day. Thank you very much. <sighs> it's tough going, isn't it? You know. But look, we'll get out the other side of it. That's the important thing. Quote, you're my new hero, Anthony, unquote, says Dave Russell. Henry Paddy Shearman says, good evening to all. Good evening, Anthony. Most, much love. Fasker Ma. I am, Katrina, you're going to have to forgive me. I'm going to have to take that down and, and just put it on a post-it until I learn it. Fasker. Fasker Ma. Because I'm always saying Thrononua. Fasker Ma. Now, I'm going to stick that on my screen so that I can keep saying that to people until I learn it. Much love, says Paddy. And straight back at you, Henry Paddy. Kelly Sewell is in Vermont saying it's almost green. Well, we'll give you some of our green. We've got lots of it, Kelly. Uh, on Gloss, Alex Casterton. Yes, OK, OK. I think we're up to date. I think we're finally up to date. What are we on? Twelve and a half minutes. Good, good. Tom King says, I think I broke my YouTube. Plan B. Hello, Anthony. Delighted to say hello and good evening all. Tom King from Bohermine. Bohermine near Navan in County Meath. We were talking about Navan a few episodes ago, weren't we, in the place names episode about whether it really is from On Uif or whether it is from On Ova. Aramon's first wife that he didn't tell his second wife about or vice versa, something along those lines. Anyway, if you were tuned in last night, you'll have enjoyed the first, I think it was about seven pages of The Fate of the Children of Ishnok. Uh, uh, of which the principal character is Deirdre. And tonight we're going to do part two, and tomorrow evening we'll finish with part three. So hopefully you'll remember what happened last night. If you don't and you're only joining us, don't worry about it. You can catch up by watching the first episode. And just a reminder that all of the episodes are available to watch on the Mythical Ireland blog, and I'm just typing in the address here as a comment beneath the video on YouTube and here on Facebook. And while I'm doing that, just a reminder to say uh, a, th a big thank you to all the patrons of Mythical Ireland over at patreon.com forward slash Mythical Ireland. They are people who support this live stream and many other activities uh, of Mythical Ireland uh, and who get rewarded for doing so. So if you would like to consider becoming a patron, pop over to the address that's coming up there now. Have a look and see perhaps if you'd like to lend your support. Of course, that is not obligatory by any means, and I will continue to do these live broadcasts one way or the other. Patricia McAteer says, wavy hand. Hello, Patricia. Hope all is good in the north of the county. <sighs> so this is after uh, Crohor was trying to decide who he would send off. Uh, he was trying to decide between uh, uh, Cuchulain and I'm just trying to find the name so I don't so I get them. Conal Kiernock, Fergus, or Cucullin. Uh, and he decided uh, that it was going to be Fergus. 
After that, the two of them went in together and Fergus told all the company how it was under his charge they were to be put. Fiona Byrne says, Hi, uh, Jehrich, Fiona. Missed the beginning, Katrina. What is the translation of Tranona, please? Well, I think the other word for evening was fiasker. F-E-A-S-G-A-R. Fiasker. Fiasker ma. Ah, sorry. Now Katrina is explaining it. Fiasker is Scottish. Scottish Gaelic. Okay. So we'll keep the Tranona, will we? But if we say fiasker, like, would people understand what we meant if they weren't from Scotland? Perhaps. Okay, so 15 and a half minutes in. Let's begin part two of the uh, Exile of the Sons of Turin. Then Conchovar, or Crohor, went to Borak and asked, had he a feast ready prepared for him? I have, said Borak, but although I was able to make it ready, I was not able to bring it to Owen or Evan. Uh, Katrina, you might help me with that as well. E M A I N with the Lenition. Is that Owen or is is it Evan? You know, they wouldn't understand us. Okay, fair enough. Well, then we'll say Tranona instead of Fiasker. Addictive, isn't it? Yeah. Is that the whiskey? Oh, sorry, the stories. All right, yeah, they're addictive too. Yeah, I thought that's what you're talking about. If that is so, said Conkovar, give it to Fergus when he comes back to Ireland, for it is gyasa on him not to refuse your feast. Borak promised he would do that, and so they wore away that night. E-M-H-A-I-N, sound, Owen, 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 good. So I wasn't far off it. Oh, oh, Owen, Owen Macha, okay. So Fergus set out in the morning, and he brought no guard nor helpers with him, but himself and his two sons, fair-haired Yulun, the rough and rough red Bunye, B-U-I-N-N-E, and Cullion, the shield bearer, and the shield itself. Aaron Eckard says, yes, it's the whiskey. Yep, absolutely. I have to admit, and I will freely admit, that when live Irish Myths episode 43 is finished, I will be pouring myself a little Bushmills as a nightcap. They went on until they got to the dwelling place of the sons of Ishnach and to Loch Eche in Alba. It is how the sons of Ishnach lived. They had three houses and the house where they made ready the food. It is not there they would eat it. And the house where they would eat it, it is not there they would sleep. <laughs> Isn't it brilliant? I, I love the, uh, the the old Irish way of doing things, which is, you know, never tell, never give someone a straightforward, direct answer to a question. You know, it's like that famous story. Uh, 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 it was, I think it's it's not a story as such; it's a joke. You know, it's about the tourist who was driving down the road and was lost, and stopped the car and wound down the window. He saw an old man standing at the side of the road. He said, excuse me, sir, could you tell me how to get to Drada? And the old man starts the whole sucking on the pipe, you know. And he just leans over towards the window of the car and he says, well, I tell you now, sir, if I was heading to Drada, I wouldn't start from here. <laughs> or, you know, could you tell me where could you tell me where Monaghan's pub is? And the man's going to go up the road there, turn left, and when you come to a crossroads, go straight through, and then you take the second right. Now, if you come to a big blue shed, you've gone too far. <laughs> ah, yes, Irish directions. Ah, or, you know, Google Maps is is, a, is a, 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 a an incredible revelation in Ireland. And the problem is that for years and years, we didn't have proper signposting. So invariably, tourists always got lost in Ireland and always had to ask directions, you know? And it's like, I, I, I remember being stopped by somebody in Drahada who wanted to go somewhere that involved quite a lot of turns and, and junctions. 
And so I gave them half the directions. And I said, when you get across the bridge, stop and ask someone else the rest of the way. Sharon Boggan Stitch says, Reading, California, checking in. Hello, folks. Jiglet, Sharon, lovely to have you along. Uh, Pamela Walter says, Jirive from the Netherlands. Tashe mo Bretla. Oh, Bretlos, Bretla Honor Dutch, Pamela. It's Pamela's birthday. Pamela Walters' birthday. She's 21 today. <laughs> Pamela, happy birthday. And I'm sure uh, many of my uh, fellow myth flixers, uh, the rest of the tribe, will undoubtedly shower you with birthday wishes now. So I hope you are having a very happy birthday. Aaron Eckert says, same in the mountains of North Carolina. <laughs> Sorry, I digressed completely from the story. We once got turned around driving around about the Irish countryside. This is Rowan Grove. And finally went to a town where we did not want to go, just so we would know where we were. <laughs> Snapper Earl says, higher from the Hudson Valley. Fault you, Snapper. Irish directions are the best, says Pat. Pat, I'm going to tell them a story about you. But if I don't get around to it tonight, I'll tell it in the next couple of nights. Don't worry. Happy birthday. There you go. Loads of birthday wishes for our Pamela, who's 21 today. <sighs> when Fergus came to the harbour, he let a great shout out of him. And it is how Nisha and Deirdre were. They had a chessboard between them and they playing on it. Nisha heard the shout and he said, that is the shout of a man of Ireland. It is not, but the cry of a man of Alban, said Deirdre. She knew at the first it was Fergus gave the shout, but she denied it. Then Fergus let another shout out of him. That is an Irish shout, said Nisha again. It is not indeed, said Deirdre. Let us go on playing. Then Fergus gave the third shout, and the sons of Ishnok knew this time it was the shout of Fergus, and Nisha said to Arden to go out and meet him. Then Deirdre told him that she herself knew at the first shout that it was Fergus. Why did you deny it then, Queen, said Nisha. Because of a vision I saw last night, said Deirdre. Three birds I saw coming to us from Owen Macha, and three drops of honey in their mouths. And they left them with us, and three drops of our blood they brought away with them. What meaning do you put on that, Queen, said Nisha. It is, said Deirdre, Fergus, that is coming to us with a message of peace from Conchuvar, or Crohor. For honey is not sweeter than a message of peace sent by a lying man. Let that pass, said Nisha. Is there anything in it but troubled sleep and the melancholy of woman? And it is a long time Fergus is in the harbour. Rise up, Arden, to be before him and bring him with you here. And Arden went down to meet him and gave a fond kiss to himself and to his two sons. And it is what he said. My love to you, dear comrades. Who is tending the drinks? I can't keep up. <laughs> Everybody raise a glass to Pamela, whose birthday it is. My love to you, dear comrades. After that, he asked news of Ireland and they gave it to him. And then they came to where Nisha and Anya and Deirdre were. And they kissed Fergus and his two sons, and they asked news of Ireland from them. It is the best news I have for you, said Fergus, that Crohor, king of Ulster, has sworn by the earth beneath him, by the high heaven above him, and by the sun that travels to the west, that he will have no rest by day nor sleep by night if the sons of Ishnach, his own foster brothers, will not come back to the land of their home and the country of their birth, and he has sent us to ask you there. It is better for them to stop here, said Deirdre, for they have a greater sway in Scotland than Conchavor himself has in Ireland. I, I, I keep alternating between Crohor and Conchavor. I, 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 I could might maybe even call him Connor. One's own country is better than any other king, said Fergus. For no man can have any pleasure, however great his good luck and his way of living, if he does not see his own country every day. That is true, said Nisha, for Ireland is dearer to myself than Alban, though I would get more in Alban than in Ireland. It will be safe indeed, said Nisha, and we will go with you to Ireland. 
and though there were no trouble beneath their su the sun, but a man to be far from his own land, there is little delight in peace and a long sleep to a man that is in exile. It is a pity for the man that is an exile. It is little his honour, it is great his grief, for it is he will have his share of wandering. It was not with Deirdre's will Nisha said that, and she was greatly against going with Fergus. And she said, <coughs> pardon me, I had a dream last night of the three sons of Ishnach, and they bound and put in the grave by Kungavar of the Red Branch. But Nisha said, Lay down your dream, Deirdre, on the heights of the hills. Lay down your dream on the sailors of the sea. Lay down your dream on the rough grey stones. For we will give peace, and we will get it from the king of the world and from Conchovar. But Deirdre spoke again, and it is what she said. There is the howling of dogs in my ears. A vision of the night is before my eyes. I see Fergus away from us. I see Conchobar without mercy in his dun. I see Nisha without strength in battle. I see Einla without his loud sounding shield. I see Arden without shield or breastplate. And the hill of Aha without delight. I see Conchobar asking for blood. I see Fergus caught with hidden lies. I see Deirdre crying with tears. I see Deirdre crying with tears. A thing that is unpleasing to me and that I would never give in to, said Fergus, is to listen to the howling of dogs and to the dreams of women. And since Crohor or Conchovar, the High King, has sent a message of friendship, it would not be right for you to refuse it. And Henry Scullion says, sorry I'm late again, Anthony. Not to worry, Henry. Falcha, pull up a chair and enjoy the scale. Daniel. Sorry, while I try to pronounce that word. Daniel. Nekshikanach Kedney says this, perhaps the darkest moment in Conchobar's life. He is a good king, but honestly, what he did in this story was terrible. Yeah, it's a uh, it's a very good point, actually. Uh, it's uh, I suppose um, it uh, perhaps demonstrates the uh, what's the word the um, capricious nature of uh, the tales. You know, hero and villain. You know, all rolled into one. Ronald McFadden says hello from Los Angeles. Hello to Anthony and to everyone. Falcha, Ronald. Lovely to have you along. And Irish technical thinker is... Uh, oh, yes. We, we did say hello, didn't we? Good. All up to date, I think. Uh, Katrina says, Owen Macha may be Macha's twins or Macha's brooch. Navan is an anglicization of the Irish on, on Avon or on, on Owen. Yeah. Interesting. Yeah. Maka's twins, of course. Yes. Or Maka's brooch. I think probably more likely Maka's twins. That's a story we can tell sometime, isn't it? It would not be right indeed, said Nisha, and we will go with you tomorrow. And Fergus gave his word and he said, if all the men of Ireland were against you, it would not profit them. For neither shield nor sword or a helmet itself would be any help or protection to them against you and I myself to be with you. That is true, said Nisha, and we will go with you to Ireland. They have both dark and light in them, the characters. Makes them more real, says Aaron. And of course, uh, uh, C.G. Young uh, uh, studied mythology uh, to try and extrapolate uh, uh, some aspects of his own theories about, you know, uh, our shadow and our unconscious from those very tales. They spent the three, sorry, they spent the night there until morning and then they went where the ships were and they went on the sea and a good many of their people with them and Deirdre looked back on the land of Alban and it is what she said. My love to you, O land to the east, and it goes ill with me to leave you. 
For it is pleasant are your bays and your harbours and your wide flower plains and your green-sided hills and little need was there for us to leave you. And she made this complaint. Dear to me is that land, that land to the east, Alban with its wonders. I would not have come from it hither, but that I came with Nisha. Dear to me, Dunfiori and Dunfion, Dear is the dun above them, dear to me Inish Droinach, dear to me Don Don Shuivne. O Koil Kuan Ohon, Koil Kuan, where Anla used to come. My grief it was short, I thought my grief it was short, I thought his stay there with Nisha in Western Alban. Glen Lee, O Glen Lee, where I used to sleep under soft coverings, fish and venison and badger's flesh. That was my portion in Glen Lee. Glen Mawson, my grief Glen Mawson, high its heart's tongue, bright its stalks. We were rocked to pleasant sleep over the wooded harbour of Mawson. Glen Archen, my grief Glen Archen, the straight valley of the pleasant ridge. Never was there a young man more light-hearted than my Nisha used to be in Glen Archen. Glen Etche, my grief Glen Etche, it was there I built my first house, beautiful where the woods on our rising, the home of the sun, is Glen Itche. Glen Darua, my grief, my grief, Glen Darua, my love to every man that belongs to it. Sweet is the voice of the cuckoo over the bending, sorry, on the bending branch of the hill above Glen Darua. Dear to me is Droyan over the fierce strand. Dear are its waters over the clean sand. I would never have come out from it at all, but that I came with my beloved. And I think this is uh, one of the reasons uh, that the scholars mentioned uh, in the introduction to the story yesterday. This is one of the reasons that Deirdre and the Sons of Ishnak is so fondly remembered or has been up until the 20th century, uh, uh, not just in Ireland, but of course in Scotland. Uh, because Deirdre had so many lovely things to say about that uh, fair and beautiful land. After she had made that complaint, they came to Dun, Dun Borok, and Borok gave them gave three fond kisses to Fergus and to the sons of Ishnach along with him. It was then Borok said he had a, a feast laid out for Fergus, and that it was gassa for him to leave it until he would have eaten it. But Fergus reddened with anger from head to foot, and it is what he said. It is a bad thing you have done, Borok, laying out a feast for me, on Concobar to have made me give my word that as soon as I would come to Ireland, whether it would be at m by day or in the night time, I would send on the sons of Ishnach to Owen Macha. I hold you under Gassa, said Borok, to stop and use the feast. Thalia Brown says, arriving late, hello from Glastonbury. Jirich Thalia Trononowa, you're very welcome along. Then Fergus asked Nisha, what should he do about the feast? You must choose, said Deirdre, whether you will forsake the children of Ishnach or the feast. And it would be better for you to refuse the feast than to, to forsake the sons of Ishnach. I will not forsake them, said he, for I will send my two sons, fair-haired Yolum and rough-red Bunya, with them to Owen Macha. On my word, said Nisha, that is a great deal to do for us. For up to this, no other person ever protected us but ourselves. And he went out of the place in great anger, and Einle and Arden and Deirdre and the two sons of Fergus followed him, and they left Fergus dark and sorrowful after them. But for all that, Fergus was full sure that if all the provinces of Ireland would go into one council, they would not consent to break the pledge he had given. Terry Lynn says, good day from Colorado. Trononawa falche, falche, jigwich, Terry Lynn. As for the sons of Ishnach, they went on their way by every short road, and Deirdre said to them, I will give you a good advice, sons of Ishnach, though you may not follow it. What is that advice, Queen, said Nisha? It is, said she, to go to Rechran between Ireland and Scotland and to wait there until Fergus has done with the feast. 
and that will be the keeping of his word to Fergus, and it will be the lengthening of your lives to you. We will not follow that advice, said Nisha, and the children of Fergus said it was little trust she had in them when she thought they would not protect her, though their hands might be might not be so strong as the hands of the sons of Ishnak. And besides that, Fergus had given them his word. Alas, it is sorrow came on us with the word of Fergus, said Deirdre, and he to forsake us for a feast. And she made this complaint. It is grief to me that ever I came from the east on the word of the unthinking son of Roch, and that is Fergus MacRoch, for it is only lamentations I will make. Och, it is very sorrowful my heart is. My heart is heaped up with sorrow. It is tonight my great heart is. My grief, my dear companions, the end of your days is come. And it is what Nisha answered her. Do not say that in your haste, Deirdre, more beautiful than the sun. Fergus would never have come for us eastward to bring us back to be destroyed. And Deirdre said, my grief, I think it's too far for you, beautiful sons of Ishnak, to have come from Albon of the rough grass. It is lasting, will, will be its lifelong sorrow. Kelly Minich is watching. Hello, Ke Kelly. Falche. After that, they went forward to Finn Cairn uh, of the Watchtower on sharp-peaked Schleilfuad, and Deirdre stayed after them in the valley, and sleep fell on her there. When Nisha saw that Deirdre was left after them, he turned back as she was rising out of her sleep, and he said, What made you wait after us, Queen? Sleep that was on me, said Deirdre, and I saw a vision in it. What vision was that, said Nisha? It was, she said, fair-haired Yulun that I saw without his head on him, and rough-red Bunya with his head on him, and it is without help of rough-red Bunya we, you were, and it is with the help of fair-haired Yulun you were. And she made this complaint. It is a sad vision has been shown to me of my four tall, bright companions. The head of each of them has been taken from him, and no help to be had one from another. But when Nisha heard this, he reproached her and said, O oh, fair, beautiful woman, nothing does your mouth speak but evil. Do not let the sharpness and the great misfortune that come from it fall on your friends. You could, you could, uh, you could exchange the word evil for truth in that sentence, couldn't you? And Deirdre answered him with kind, gentle words, and it is what she said. It would be better to me to see harm come on any other person than upon any of you three with whom I have travelled over the seas and over the wide plains. But when I look on you, it is only Bunya I can see whole and untouched, and I know by that his life will be longest among you. And indeed, it is I that am sorrowful tonight. After that, they came forward to the high willows, and it was then Deirdre said, I see a cloud in the air, and it is a cloud of blood. And I would give you a good advice, sons of Ishnak, she said. Ah, good advice. <laughs> what is that advice, said Nisha? To go to Dundalgan, where Cuchulain is, until Fergus has done with the feast, and to be under the protection of Cuchulain for fear of the treachery of Concubar. And of course, Dundalgan is Dundalk, and at Cuchulain's castle, at Castle. Uh, Castletown Moat, uh, just outside Dundalk, still standing today, the, the moat with the tower on the top. Since there is no fear on us, we will not follow that advice, said Nisha. And Deirdre complained, and it is what she said. O oh, Nisha, look at the cloud I see above us in the air. I see a cloud over green macha, cold and deep, red like blood. I am startled by the cloud that I see in the air, a thin, dreadful cloud that is like a clot of blood. I give a right advice to the beautiful sons of Ishnok not to go to Owen tonight because of the danger that is over them. We will go to Dundalgan, where the hound of the smith is. We will come tomorrow from the south along with the hound Cuchulain. But Nisha said in his anger to Deirdre, since there is no fear on us, we will not follow your advice. And Deirdre turned to the grandsons of Rock, and it is what she said. This is beginning to sound like a real marriage, isn't it? 
it, it is <laughs> it is seldom until now, Nisha, that yourself and myself were not of the one mind. I say to you, Nisha, that you would not have gone against me like this the day Mananon gave me the cup in the time of his great victory. The men never listened then as well. <laughs> Very true, Margaret. <laughs> After that, they won, went, went on to Owen Macha. Sons of Ishnach, said Deirdre, I have a sign by which you will know if Conchobar is going to do treachery on you. What sign is that, said Nisha? If you are let come into the house where Conchobar is and the nobles of Ulster, then Conchobar is not going to do treachery on you. But if it is in the house of the Red Branch you are put, then he is going to do treachery on you. <laughs> Katrina summarizes it very succinctly. Deirdre, don't go. Men, go. Feck it, leads. Listen to the woman. <laughs> After that, they came to Owamacha and they took the handwood and struck the door. And the doorkeeper asked who was there. They told him that it was the sons of Ishnak and Deirdre and the two sons of Fergus were there. When Honkobar heard that, he called his steward and serving men to him. Pardon me. And he asked them how was the house of the Red Branch for food and drink. They said that if all the seven armies of Ulster would come there, they would find what would satisfy them. If that is so, said Conchobar, bring the sons of Ishnok into it. It was then Deirdre said, it would have been better for you to follow the, <laughs> the scolding one. It would have been better off if you'd listened to me in the first place. <laughs> it would have been better for you to follow my advice and never to have come to Owen, Owen Macha. And it would be right for you to leave it even at this time. We will not, said fair-haired Yullan, for it is not fear or cowardly, cowardliness that ever, sorry, for it is not fear or cowardliness was ever seen on us, but we will go to the house. So they went on to the house of the Red Branch and the stewards and the serving men with them and well tasting food was served to them and pleasant drinks. Would that be Coca-Cola or would that be Puccine? Or maybe a bit of both. Make minor rum and coke. <laughs> Till they were all glad and merry, except only Deirdre and the sons of Ishnak, for they did not use much food or drink because of the length and the greatness of their journey from Dunborach to Owenmacha. Then Nisha said, give the chessboard to us till we go playing. So they gave them the chessboard and they began to play. It was just at that time Conchobar was asking, who will I send that will bring me word of Deirdre and that will tell me if she has the same appearance and the same shape she had before? For if she has, there is not a woman in the world has a more beautiful shape or appearance than she has. And I will bring her out with edge of blade and point of sword in spite of the sons of Ishnak, good though they be. Margaret says mead. Well, you know, whatever your fancy is, whatever your pleasure is, mead sounds good to me. Yes, and uh, Katrina is pointing out that the chest that they keep talking about is in fact fickle, which is like an Irish version or maybe fic chess is an, in an English version of, of an old Irish game. Who knows? But Fickle was the name. F-I-D-C-H-E-L-L. -L. Jim Conway says his is cider. That's, again, absolutely fine, Jim. A cider from Owen Aulach, from the uh, Isle of the Apples, maybe. Macho men equals sword fodder, says Aaron. <laughs> Rowan Grove says she's been brewing mead for 40 years. What did you say your address was, Rowan? <laughs> uh, you'll have a few callers tomorrow <clears throat> someday 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 uh, we'll get the opportunity to drink mead in colorado Do -do 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 -do. now where was i but if not let nisha have her for himself i myself will go there said levercom and i will bring you word of that and it is how it was Deirdre was dearer to her than any other person in the world, for it was often she went through the world looking for Deirdre and bringing news to her and from her. Adele Perth says, hello, everyone. I'm very late. Adele, um, do you know, um, uh, you're, you're like, is it, what is it, quarter to four in the morning where you are or quarter to five or something like that? It's completely forgivable for you to be late. There's no problem. 
Uh, Gavin Duffy says, Anthony, do you have an email I can send you a music mix to? Yes, and I think Aaron has just given it to you there. Mythical Ireland at gmail.com. Thanks, Gavin. Yeah, we're all calling around to uh, Rowan Grove's house when all this nonsense with COVID-19 is over. It's not nonsense, I know. With all this situation with not COVID is over, we're all heading to Rowan's house. We're going to have a, a very, very big storytelling session and we're all going to drink mead. Okay, okay. I'm, I'm getting excited, I know. So Levercam went over to the House of the Red Branch and near... And near it, she saw a great troop of armed men. And she spoke to them, but they made her no answer. And she knew by that it was none of the men of Ulster were in it, but men from some strange country that Conchobar's messengers had brought to Owen. And then she went in where Nisha and Deirdre were, and it is how she found them, the polished chessboard between them, and they playing on it. And she gave them fond kisses, and she said, you are not doing well to be playing, and it is to bring Crohor or Concobar word if Derda has the same shape and appearance she used to have that he sent me here now. And there is grief on me for the deed that will be done in Owen tonight, treachery that will be done, and the killing of kindred, and the three bright candles of the gale to be quenched, and Owen will not be the better of it to the end of life and time. And she made this complaint sadly and wearily. Oh, Rowan says, I have plenty of mead and a good fire pit out back. You're all very welcome. Well, there you go. Consider that uh, as soon as we are able, we'll be hopping on a plane. Well, I'll be hopping on a plane, heading over to Colorado. And uh, yes, I look forward to that. And perhaps we can do the live from Rowan's uh, gaff. Uh, Kirsten, Kristen Murray says, I'm awful late too, but listening after a long day of helping with remote learning is good for me. I'm very glad to have you along, Kristen. Fault you. 5.15 a.m. where Adele is in Adelaide. I slept in, lol. Completely forgivable, Adele, but it's lovely to see you. I hope you're well. Hmm. Just find Deirdre and listen to her. Her name might be Jacinda now. Very good point, Katrina. Sad is my heart for the treachery that is being done in Owen this night. On account of this treachery, Owen will never be at peace from this out. And three that are most kinglike today under the sun, the three best of all that live on the earth. It is grief to me tonight, they to die for the sake of any woman. Nisha and Anla, whose deeds are known, and Ardan, their brother, treachery is to be done on the young, bright-faced three. It is not that I am not sorrowful tonight. Sorry. It is not I that am not sorrowful tonight. Which is a roundabout way of saying I am sorrowful tonight. Monumental Ireland is in the house. Super stuff, Anthony. And kudos for the sterling job sharing this with us all. Thank you, Simon. I uh, hope you're keeping well. Lovely to have you along. And folks, if you haven't seen it, get over to Monumental Ireland's Facebook page, which is full of fabulous pictures and information about Irish monuments. Super stuff. Brilliant to have you along. We gave you a mention yesterday evening for your help with the graphic as well. <sighs> when she had made this complaint, Leverham said to the sons of Ishnach and to the children of Fergus to shut close the doors and the windows of the house, house and to do bravery. And, oh, sons of Fergus, she said, Defend your charge and your care bravely till Fergus comes, and you will have praise and a blessing for it. And she cried with many tears, and she went back to where Conchobar was, and he asked news of Deirdre of her. And Leverham said, It is good news and bad news I have for you. What news is that? said Conchobar. It is the good news, she said. The three sons of Ishnach have come to have come to you and to be over there. And they are the three that are bravest and mightiest in form and in looks and in countenance of all in the world. And Ireland will be yours from this out, since the sons of Ishnach are with you. And the news that is worst with me is the woman that was the best of the women of the world in form and in looks going out of Owen is without the form and without the appearance she used to have. 
When Khonkabar heard that, much of his jealousy went backwards, and he was drinking and making merry for a while, until he thought on Deirdre again the second time, and on that he asked, Who will I get to bring me word of Deirdre? But he did not find anyone would go there. And then he said to Galban, the merry, pleasant son of the king of Lochlan, Go over and bring me word if Deirdre has the same shape and the same appearance she used to have. For if she has, there is not on the ridge of the world or on the waves of the earth a woman more beautiful than herself. So Gelban went to the house of the Red Branch. I'm ignoring some of the comments. I'm just going to let you guys talk. You know, you can chatter among yourselves for us yourselves for a while. <clears throat> Sarah Clare says hi and blessings to everyone from du Dublin. Uh, Gia Rich, uh, Sarah, and all our friends in Balia hope you're keeping safe and well. So Gelban went to the house of the Red Branch, and he found the doors and the windows of the fort shut. And fear came on him, and it is what he said. It is not an easy road for anyone that would get to the sons of Ishnach, for I think there is very great anger on them. And after that, he found a window that was left open by forgetfulness in his house, and he was looking in. Uh, Patricia Healy Sullivan says, Deirdre and Maeve are my heroines from Bakersfield, Vermont. Many thanks. And uh, you're very welcome along, fault you. Why would she not be comfort eating with no one listening to her? I told you. <laughs> uh, after that, sorry, and after that, he found a window that was left open by for forgetfulness in the house and he was looking in. Then Deirdre saw him through the window. And when she saw him looking at her, she went into a red blaze of blushness. And Misha knew that someone was looking at her from the window. And she told him that she saw a young man looking in at them. It is how Nisha was at the time. With a man of the chessmen in his hand. And he made a fair throw over his shoulder at the young man. That put the eye out of his head. <laughs> he threw a chess piece over his shoulder. And knocked your man's eye out with it. <laughs> uh, brilliant. And Ishnak is here. We are loving this, Anthony. Great stuff. And Falcha Ishnak. What a great honour it is to have Ishnak in the house. Uh, one of the most sacred and beautiful and extraordinarily powerful places of the earth. Lovely to have representatives of Ishnak. Falcha. Welcome, Ishnak, says Margaret. Completely right. Katrina Levy says, hi, Anthony. Giorich, Katrina. Lovely to have you along. The young man, man went back to where Konkobar was. You are merry and pleasant going out, said Konkobar, but you are sad and cheerless coming back. And then Galban told him the story from beginning to end. I see well, said Konkobar. The man that made the throw, the man that made that throw, will be king of the world unless he has his life shortened. And what appearance is there on Deirdre, he said. It is this, said Galban. Although Nisha put out my eye, I would have wished to stay there looking at her with the other eye, but for the haste you put on me. For there is not in the world a woman is better of shape or of form than herself. When Khonkobar heard that, he was filled with jealousy and with envy, and he bade the men of his army that were with him and that had been drinking at the feast to go and attack the place where the sons of Ishnak were. So they went forward to the house of the Red Branch, and they gave three great shouts around it, and they put fires and red flames to it. When the sons of Ishnak heard the shouts, they asked who those men were that were about the house. Konkubar and the men of Ulster, they all said together. It is the Pledge of Fergus you would break. Sorry, is it the Pledge of Fergus you would break, said fair-haired Yolam. On my word, said Konkubar, there will be regret on the sons of Ishnak. Deirdre to be with them. That is true, said Deirdre. Fergus had deceived you. By my oath, said Rough Red Bunye, if he betrayed, we will not betray. It was then Bunye went out and killed three fifths of the fighting men outside. <laughs> Very precise uh, uh, with their uh, fractions here. Three fifths of the fighting men outside and put great disturbance on the rest. And Konkobar asked who was there 
and who was doing destruction on his men like that? It is I myself, Rough Red Bunya, son, pardon me, son of Fergus, said he. I will give you a good gift if you leave if you will leave off, said Conchobar. What gift is that? said Rough Red Bunya. A hundred of land, said Conchobar. Oh, oh, I tell you, oh, paying them off with offers of land. Such treachery. What besides, said Rough Red Bunya. My own friendship and my counsel, said Conchobar. I will take that, said Rough Red Bunya. It was a good mountain that was given to him as a reward, but it turned barren in the same night, and no green grew on it again forever, and it used to be called the Mountain of the Share of Bunya. Deirdre heard what they were saying. By my word, she said, Rough Red Bunya has forsaken you, and in my opinion, it is like the father the son is. I give my word, said fair-haired Yollum, that it is not so with me. As long as this narrow, straight sword stays in my hand, I will not forsake the sons of Ishnach. After that, fair-haired Yollum went out and made three courses around the house and killed three-fifths of heroes outside. And he came in again where Nisha was, and he playing Fikil, and Anya with him. So Yolan went out the second time, and made three other courses around the fort. And he brought a lighted torch with him on the lawn, and he went destroying the hosts, so that they dared not come to attack the house. And he was a good son, fair-haired Yolan, for he never refused any person on the ridge of the world anything that he had. And he never took wages from any person, but only Fergus. And that there let me just double check this now. I think I think that's the I think that is our portion for tonight. Yes. That there is the, concludes part two of the tale. Cue East Enders music and uh, more tomorrow night. <laughs> Uh, if there are comments or questions, uh, we would be delighted to have them. Heather Geron Rice says hello from Lancaster in Pennsylvania. Uh, Falcha, Heather, lovely to have you along this evening. Uh, you have missed this evening's storytelling, but not to worry, it will be available on video for you to look back at very, very shortly. Um, Margaret says, I'm going grey even. Deirdre was one patient woman, wasn't she indeed? Not a man to listen to. David Gilroy is watching. Uh, Jigic, David, how are you? Uh, Henry says, measuring by reference to five, which is interesting. It's interesting that Ishnak is in the house and that uh, the old Irish for a province was Coiga, wasn't it? Or Coigu, Coigu, wasn't it? A fifth, you know, because there were five provinces, you know. But what if there were seven? How could they say they killed three-fifths of them? There must have been 15 of them or, you know, or 50 of them or something like that. Anyway. Who knows? But it's interesting all the same. Alan Brayette, here you are, Anthony. Why is everyone afraid of seven? Because seven, eight, nine. But why? Because he needed three square meals. <laughs> yeah, Nakuiga, says Katrina. That joke is right up my alley, Alan. You've been watching my Facebook feed. Yolan, one who worships a different god. Yolan was the son of the High King Fergus MacRoth and a champion at the court of King Conchobar or Crohor MacNessa. When Deirdre and Nishi eloped to Scotland, Yolan went with his father to persuade them to return to Ireland, believing that Conchobar really had forgiven them. When he returned with them and discovered that all Conchobar really wanted was revenge, he died defending them. Oh, we shouldn't be spoiling the story for pretend you didn't hear that. Ishnak says, wonderful. Thanks for sharing with so many around the world. Midja. Ah, <laughs> uh, yes. You're very, very welcome. Lovely, lovely, lovely to have you in the house. What Deirdre, Alex says, what Deirdre was taken away to be locked after away from everyone. I wonder if she felt what we feel in this lockdown. Interesting observation. So anyway, um, when you all scarp her off, I'm going to tell you a story about Paddy. The bell, Pat Rowan. Uh, I'm not sure if you're still there, Pat, Pat, Patrick, Paddy, Porig Rowan. Is Pat Rowan still in the house? Uh, will I embarrass the hell out of you or will I wait till they're all gone and then we'll tell the story? <laughs> so, um, 
actually before that just to check on my latest uh, uh supply of jokes was there any one that would be oh yeah i said this morning that i might sleep on the couch tonight to cut cut down on my morning commute No, never mind. No, I'm not going there. No, that's not even funny. Brilliant time for my Guinness, says Michael Naylor. Enjoy the Guinness, Mike. Tell it now, says Maeve. Pat Rowan, are you still in the house? Okay. Patty here. There he is. There he is. So uh, I can't remember how long ago it is, Pat. It, it's, uh, it's perhaps five or six years back. One night I took it into my head. And this is a true story. Uh... Uh, and every Shanna Key always says, before telling a totally unbelievable story, always says this story is 100% true. And it is 100% true. Dave Russell is asking about the dream. I will tell you about the dream. I will. But just not now. It doesn't feel right. I need it to percolate first. But but you love this story. You love this story. I was learning to play the whistle. Uh, the Irish whistle. Now, some of you will know this as the tin whistle or the penny whistle. I have in my possession uh, a couple, I have a few whistles actually. I have a, a D whistle, a, a, a low D whistle and a low F whistle, as well as, you know, the regular tin whistle. And I have an A whistle and I have a couple, couple of others in various keys, you know. And I found that because I have a slight, uh, what's the word? I don't have sort of very good uh dexterity with my digits my digital dexterity i find that i'm not very good at playing fast tunes but that i can play slow tunes reasonably well and you might have heard some of my playing on some of my videos over time but anyway one night when i was learning the whistle i just decided i was sitting here and a, uh, an idea came into my head fajog stein yeah on fajog yeah uh, and stein is what is that um Katrina helped me with that one. I know Fajog is whistle, but it, it just uh, a notion seized me that I needed to go on my own straight out to Newgrange, straight to Sheonvru, to Sheedenbroga, and that I was going to play a tune uh, for the Dina She or the two of the Danon, the deities. I have no idea what possessed me to do it, Except for, I just felt this, uh, what would you call it, a compulsion, uh, a tin, stein, thank you, yeah, uh, you think I would have figured that out, wouldn't you, stein, on, 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 fadog stein, and so I grabbed some of the whistles, and I hopped into the car, this was night time now, and I think it was in the winter, and I drove out to Newgrange, and I parked the car at the side of the road, as you do. And there was nobody around. And I switched off the ignition, turned off the lights and got out of the car with the whistle, one of the whistles. And there's a little, I don't know if any of you have been to Newgrange, but along the road at Newgrange, you know, the one where you've often seen my pictures of Newgrange, I take them over the hedge, basically. Well, just at the side of the road, there's a, there's a hump in the grass that where a tree used to grow, a tree that was cut down about 10 years ago. And that hump gives you a sort of a, a nice little platform to stand on, to see over the hedge, to take your pictures of Newgrange. And so I stood there with the whistle. And I had no idea what tune I was going to play. The tune was automatically going to happen. And so I stood there and I, uh, you know, the way you, you, you cover the, the, the outlet or whatever it's called in the whistle and give a blow just to clear out anything that might be in the whistle. And then I said, you know, just start to play an air, a slow air. And it was very funny. <laughs> I got a distinct message uh, from the Dean of She that uh, I, I could conclude one of two things from, that either they didn't want to hear my music or I wasn't quite ready <laughs> to perform. Because what happened was it was a little bit windy. And when I tried to play, the wind was kind of rushing over the uh, the whistle, the outlet of the whistle. Someone might know what if there's a particular um, name for the, you know, I mean, there's the finger holes. But, you know, up near the mouthpiece, there's a, 
uh, a little uh, a little gap or an opening where the where the sound comes out of. Well, the wind was blowing across that, and so I struggled quite a bit to make any sort of a decent sound of a tune out of it. Now, after a little bit, I got going and I played very, very softly and very quietly. I just played whatever came into my head. And it just felt just completely natural and a completely normal thing to do. Now, all the same people were at home, uh, sitting on the settee with the remote control in their hands, watching the TV, or they were out engaged in one of their hobbies, uh, maybe, you know, playing sport or playing cards or down the pub having a drink. And here's Murphy at the side of the road in the countryside on his own in the dark. Oh, it's called a fipple. Thank you, Aaron. The fipple. And, uh, you know, struggled for a little bit to play any sort of a tune because the wind. And so I figured out a way that I could turn that the wind wasn't blowing over the fipple so much and where the tune could be heard. And I played this really, really soft, very quiet air. I think I was actually almost embarrassed and afraid that somebody might actually hear me other than uh, the two of the Danon or the the, 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 the Dina she, you know, that some human might hear me and come up and say, will you ever stop that for God's sake? Put that thing away. You can't play it. You fucking need you, you know? And so uh, I played the tune, uh, but it did sort of on and off struggle with the wind. And after a while, I just stood there, as I sometimes do, I've been known to do, I just stood there in the darkness, under the stars, and just enjoyed the peace of the place because uh, Newgrange is, is an incredible uh, place because during the day it's always busy well not at the moment of course because it's closed and there's a lockdown but generally speaking it's very busy and there are swarms of people coming and going all day long from the beginning of the day until the end of the day as long as it's bright uh, and that is what restricts the tours in the winter the tours start later in the morning and finish earlier in the afternoon in the summer they get extended out they use as much of the light as possible because it's safe once there's good light to bring people onto the site but at night time on a regular basis over the last well over the last 21 years anyway i have found myself uh, there alone or in the company of one or two friends or family members and often i've just stood there and contemplated and all the rest and just thought and i really don't know what it was about that night there was just something that said to me go and play a tune for the people of new grange go out there and bring your whistle and even if you play badly play them a tune you know and so i came home eventually and thought nothing nothing of it and went off to bed uh, now, Pat Rowan and myself had become friends on Facebook. Myself and Pat have never actually met face to face. We had arranged to meet uh, here in Ireland when Pat and his wife, Laura, were here. Um, oh, again, I can't remember exactly what the year was, Pat. Um, maybe you can remember, but I'd say it was seven or eight years ago. And uh, I couldn't meet Pat because my daughter had severely broken her leg and was having surgery to repair it. And so I couldn't meet him when he was over this part of the country. And himself and his wife were cycling around Ireland. But um, anyway, that's besides the story. The next day, and remember, there's a big time difference between uh, Ireland and Washington State. I think it's generally seven hours. So Pat would often text me at sort of, you know, um, I, 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 if I'm getting texts, say, at 7 a.m. in the morning from Pat, I'm like, she's very early in the morning. And then I realize, yes, it's midnight in Washington. So it's late at night there. Pat says it was 2013, so seven years ago. And Pat texts me uh, on Facebook, uh, Facebook Messenger, and says, hi, Anthony, how are you going? And all the usual greetings and all the rest. And he says, I hope you don't find this strange. Something along those lines. I can't remember the exact conversation, Pat. You'll forgive me. And and I said, right. <laughs> I can't remember. It was probably early in the morning for you and late or for me and late at night for you. And uh, so he starts by saying, I hope, yes, it was Tara indeed. I hope you don't find this strange. And I'm like, okay, go on. And he said, I had a vision. I've had a vision of you. He said, I saw you struggling to play music, struggling in the wind. Now that's a, 
a summary of what he said. I mean, I don't know if they're exactly the words that he said. But Pat told me that from three or 4,000 miles away, he had seen me struggling to play whistle music in the wind. And I just thought that, you know, this is one of the reasons that in my work, in my written work, and all of my work around Mythical Ireland, I refuse steadfastly to ever rule anything out and never to just automatically jump to conclusions. There is, for me, and I'm speaking from experience, there is, for me, an undeniable uh, energy, spiritual essence, mystical element of all of this. And when I say all of this, I mean human life. This, the experience uh, of life teaches you sometimes things that you cannot read in any book. And when you talk to, you know, your, 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 uh, your very rational and science-minded and high-minded friends, uh, you know, who maybe haven't had these experiences, they 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 take you at your word, but you 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 think that maybe in the back of their head they're saying, yeah, I don't think Anthony's right in the head, you know. But you have experiences that run contrary to what you've been taught, and that was one of many many experiences in my life that ran contrary to what I had been taught. And what I had been taught was that there's no such thing as psychic ability. There's, there's no way that somebody can see at a, a distant remove something that's happening thousands of miles away. And uh, Pat proved to me, uh, and I didn't need it proved to me because I knew it already, but it was a reaffirmation uh, in my own head uh, of something that had happened, uh, you know, uh, that was apparently extraordinary, but which I think to pre- Christian, especially prehistoric cultures, would have been considered very, very normal. For their shamans, if you want to use that word, for their, pardon me, for their druids, the experience of psychic contact with other people in other realms, whether they be human earthly realms or other realms beyond this one, other spiritual realms, heavenly realms, whatever you want to call it, uh, was an absolute necessity of life, in fact, and an absolutely normal function for a human being was to have a psychic ability or a psychic contact. Now, I started reading C.G. Young about five or six years ago and have been enthralled that somebody who was very, very thoroughly scientific in his method uh, also saw that this was indeed extremely possible. You tell this so well, Anthony. Yeah, I'm just looking back at Pat's comments. I want to see Pat's comments because um, uh, Pat is the one who saw it. He says, it looked very funny. <laughs> it looked very funny flaying your head about. And I just wonder whether that's, you know, if there is such thing as deities and if there are, you know, uh, uh, spirits and deities and you know ancestors beyond that threshold looking out of the doorway of she and on rue at me whether they also thought it was funny looking and they were laughing and giggling at me flaying my head about the f place making funny faces he says yeah i even said it looked funny <laughs> i loved it yeah imprinted in my mind always what happened yeah and so it's extraordinary. Um, so uh, I, I'm sharing that because I, I just I've seen Pat coming up on the on the lives so often, and we communicate very regularly. And I thought it would be a good opportunity to tell you the story. And I suppose the the one of the lessons, and there are probably many lessons from it. And I know this has extended the episode a little bit. One of the lessons for me is that you can sometimes meet a person in the, the virtual space, in the electronic world. And you wonder if you can have a proper friendship and a proper connection with them, despite the fact that you've never sh shook their hand or, you know, uh, embraced them or given them a hug or a kiss or whatever. Um, and <clears throat> I can tell you without any hesitation that 
I have met numerous people uh, virtually, some of whom I've gone on to meet in real life, uh, with whom I have developed uh, a friendship uh, and and a connection that goes way beyond um, what would be considered, you know, uh, uh, normal, rational, uh, empirical, measurable uh, human connection, you know. And there are some things in life that you just can't explain. Um, I started talking about synchronicity in my very first book, In Island of the Setting Sun, and I haven't stopped talking about it since, because I find at the most extraordinary moments that the most incredible things happen. And I wonder if this is a moment uh, to share with you a line from the uh, Return to Segish, which is that book that I told you I believe to be my most uh, my 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 most special piece of writing to date. Uh, and to relay another very remarkable uh, incident, or maybe I'll keep that. Maybe I'll keep that for another episode. But um, yeah, it's just to say that you know beyond uh, the words and the photographs and the physical interaction and the seeing and the touching and the smelling uh, and, you know, to get a sense of a place. There is a, a, another dimension to it always, uh, and that is the indescribable dimension. And for me, living in Ireland and being so close to this landscape, I think I have come to understand over the years why it is that the poets were so bloody important in early, uh, in medieval Ireland and in prehistoric Ireland. I believe that they've always been important. And that is because they were able to give voice to something that could not be explained in rational terms. That they uh, were the mystical element or they were able to speak of the mystical element and speak to the mystical element. They were the ones who played tunes for the deities. They were the ones who sang and danced for them. They were the ones who communed with ancestors. They were the ones who starved themselves for many days and perhaps took uh, mushrooms and what have you and went off on uh, remarkable journeys into other realms because they didn't just believe in that space, that space that is represented by Ishnak, that mystical fifth dimension, as it were. It's not just that they believed in it. For them, it was utterly, palpably real. And only in the modern era, since the 20th century, and since the development of big cities and the electrification of uh, every developed nation, have we actually gone away from that? And have we thought that we had now grown out of the need for it? So there you go. Bloody hell. Margaret says she's crying. And I have to stop now before I start. Pat says, I would love to have a get together and see you all. Pat, I'm looking forward to the day when I can welcome you to Glan the Bonia and yourself and myself will have a few drams uh, by the River Boyne, somewhere in the twilight, with the bats uh, and the curlews flying over our heads. And we, we will raise a toast to the ancient gods of uh, the monuments, you and me. So there you go. Lots and lots and lots to think about. I have had one of those moments, Anthony, when one gets a mad idea. That is why I walked up to into the Cooley Mountains in the pre-dawn darkness to greet the new millennium dawn standing on Karnawadi stones, wondering who may have been there a thousand years before. It was much too cold to stay more than a very short time once the daylight came, so there was definitely no feeling of any connections. Interesting stuff, Brendan. Kerem says, in his book, Think and Grow Rich, Napoleon Hill mentioned on chapter 13, the brain as a broadcasting and receiving station for thought vibrations. Is there so much, isn't there? There really is so much beyond what we can measure. Anyway, look, I can't, I can't go on because I, I'm actually uh, quite emotional. So um, just to say thanks. And tomorrow evening, not to forget that we are on at Shachta Club. We are on at seven o'clock Irish time tomorrow evening. It is Friday. It is date night. And myself and my wife are going to have some food and some, uh, maybe a glass of wine and sit and watch a movie together as we always do on a Friday night. 
folks, it's been lovely tonight. I've really enjoyed it. You really are a, a wonderful bunch of people. Uh, and it's been lovely having you along. And I look forward to tomorrow night where we can continue and conclude the story of Deirdre and the Sons of Ishnak. So anyway, Sloan Gafol, uh, Kolosov, to every one of you, have a good night. Stay safe and uh, keep up the distancing. I know it's hard work uh, and I know it's difficult for us humans because we are mostly a sociable species. But do your very best uh, and have a good night. We'll speak to you all again tomorrow night. Take it easy. Sloan Gach Dinagolair. And to the YouTubers, the same to yourselves. Call us off, Slon.